Hey everybody, my name is Derek Peterson from New and Dangerous Opinions. So today I want to do something a little bit different. Um, I've been on Twitter lately. I, I really just can't even hardly go on Twitter anymore or any social network or YouTube. It's just very, for me, it's very discouraging when I go on there now and I see the people that who are new influencers, that are new leaders for conservatism, um, you know, from, you know, these, these e-celebs on Twitter and on YouTube and and radio show hosts and our politicians and just everybody who's like an influencer, a leader anywhere just seems like complete degenerates and grifters and liars. And you're just like, ah, oh, this is just very black pilling, the kids say, right? Very discouraging, as, as old folks say. And, you know, and then so I just started thinking about some of these great old guys. So I thought I would just kind of, um, I started remembering some of these guys that I've known from back in the days and um, and just kind of, you know, wishing that we had people like this nowadays. Right. Um, you know, there's 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 some, but there just don't seem to be the same level as these guys um, right now. What we have anyway. So um, today, somebody is coming up on the nine year anniversary and I thought I would do a little bit of a memorial for um, for uh, a, a great man named Ted Gunderson. So he died oh, coming up on nine years very soon. Um, I knew him at the end of his life. I was helping him with a case, actually. And I don't know, going on 12 years, you know, all the way up to the end of his life, 12, 13 years ago, I guess. And um, <clears throat> I was helping him with a case. Um uh, maybe I, I, I'm going to get into I'll, I'll talk about that case at the end. But first, let's just give a little history on who Ted Gunderson was and what he was about. OK. Um, his background. So Ted Gunderson, born November 1928, died July 31st, 2011. He was an American FBI special agent in charge of head of Los Angeles FBI. According to his son, he worked the case of Marilyn Monroe. In John F. Kennedy cases, he was the author of the best-selling book, How to Locate Anyone Anywhere Without Leaving a Trace. So early in his career, at the early at the FBI, Ted Gunderson was born in Colorado Springs. He graduated from the University of Nebraska, Lincoln, in 1950. Gunderson joined the Federal Bureau of Investigation in December of 1951 under Edgar Hoover, who was also a degenerate. He served in the mobile Knoxville and New York City and Albuquerque offices. He held posts as assistant special agent in charge of New Haven, and Philadelphia. In 1973, he became the head of the Memphis FBI office and then the head of the Dallas FBI office in 1975. Ted Gunnerson was appointed the head of the Los Angeles FBI in 1977, big office. In 1979, he was one of a handful interviewed for the job of FBI director, which ultimately went to William Webster. Um, so this guy had a pretty awesome career in the FBI, okay? And he was a real Boy Scout. He was a real, he's, there's not, all everyone in the FBI is not bad. Everyone in the CIA is not bad. Most of them are. But it's like saying, oh, you know, there's a lot of good cops. Not really. Not really. If there were, there'd be a lot more cops getting called out and going to jail. Um, but anyway, um, he was a real Boy Scout. Let me tell you. I mean, he was sincere. He was just like, whoosh, straight on, right? Even at the end of his, even in his 80s, he was still just like, very like Boy Scoutish in his thinking and the way he processed things, much more so than me, who's kind of more like, you know, let's just get this taken care of. Um, <clears throat> anyway, after the FBI, after time for the FBI, Gunnerson set up a private investigation firm, Ted Gunnerson Associates in Santa Monica. In 1980, he became a defense investigator for Greenbury Dr. Jeffrey McDonald, who had been convicted of 1970 murders of his pregnant wife and two daughters. Gunnerson obtained affidavits from Helena Stokely confessing to her involvement in the murders, which she claimed had actually been perpetrated by a satanic cult of which she was a member. Um, this was the case I was helping him with, actually, at the end of his life. Um, it was a very important. He worked on it for a long time. We had very different views on it. I'll get, maybe I'll, I'm going to get into that at the end here. Um, I don't want this to go too long. I just want to do a quick memorial service. I don't want to get sidetracked on all. I mean, he had, let me just read this through first. He also investigated a child molestation trial in Manhattan Beach, California, 1995 conference in Dallas. Gunderson warned about the supposed proliferation of secret occult groups 
occultist groups and the danger posed by the New World Order, an alleged shadow government that would be controlling the United States government. He also claimed that a slave auction in which children were sold by Saudi Arabian agents to men have been held in Las Vegas, that 4,000 ritual human sacrifices are performed in New York City every year, and that the 1995 bombing of the Alfred P. Murrow building, federal building in Oklahoma City was carried out by the U.S. government. Gunderson believed that the United States was, was that in the United States, there is a secret widespread network of groups who kidnap children and infants and subject them to ritual abuse and subsequent human sacrifice. In LaBelle versus FBI, Gunderson submitted an affidavit stating, among other things, that thousands of victims had been targeted by an illegal government rogue criminal enterprise that is active 24 hours a day within the U.S. whose administrators can instantly initiate surveillance, phone taps, and harassment against any individual in the country. The affidavit confirms some of the allegations made by so-called targeted individuals. His personal life, Gunderson had an association with music producer and conspiracy theorist Anthony Hilder, who had and was interviewed by him on various occasions. The two men appeared at numerous conferences together. They both said the 1993 World Trade Center bombing was the result of FBI provocateurs. Gunderson was a member of the Constitution Party in 2008. Gunderson stated that he had tested positive for arsenic and cyanide poisoning. Gunderson's associates, Dr. Edward Lucidi, treated Gunderson and stated that his fingers were turning black, a characteristic symptom of arsenic poisoning. On July 31st, 2011, Gunderson's son reported that his father died from cancer of the bladder. That's all true. <clears throat> For once, Wikipedia got it mostly right. Um, Ted Gunderson was certainly poisoned, had certainly been poisoned with at least arsenic, probably several other things throughout his life and survived. He's a very strong guy, lived all the way into his 80s. Um, bladder cancer is a very, very common result of arsenic poisoning and other kinds of poisonings. And um, it finally killed him when he was 82. Strong guy. Um, but he'd been poisoned many times. He was probably poisoning at the end of his life because he still had a lot of arsenic in his body because even after his body, you know, sat around for a month, his everything started turning black. His fingers started turning black again. Um, but anyway, I spoke to him just real quick. I spoke to him a couple of days before he passed away. Um, and I, I came in right out and asked him and said, do you know what's going to happen to you when you die? Without a hesitation, without a doubt, he's 100% sure he was born again Christian. 100% sure. I'm 100% sure as if I've ever, you know, of anybody I've ever met that he that he was saved, and that he's in heaven right now with God. All these people that he investigated, some of me put all these people, a lot of these people he put away, they're burning in hell right now, right? And that's the, that's what matters in the end of the game, okay? But in the meantime, you want to try to help people. You want to try to protect people. You want to do what's right. And sometimes you just do it even though you know it's a losing cause what good is really saving one kid do? You're going to sacrifice your whole life to save one kid. A guy like Ted Gunderson would say, yeah, he would. The guys we have now running things, no, they wouldn't. They would say, eh, I'm going to have a nice life. Sorry, kid, you're on your own. They wouldn't sacrifice. They wouldn't sacrifice a day probably to save a kid, okay, to save anything or anybody. They intentionally cover up crimes from kids for money in exchange for money. A lot of these guys. A lot of these influencers on Twitter and things like that are there intentionally to be disinfo agents, right? Um, so Ted Gunderson, like I said, was a great man. So how do we identify great men? Okay, number one, they're Christian. They're born again Christians. All right. I'm sorry, but if you think you can investigate the kind of things, go up against the kind of things these guys going against, face death all day, every single day from poisoning, from real life hitmen that are very smart, very capable men. Um, and, and for your family, risk, your family's going to, you know, your family's going to get killed. You're going to get killed. You're going to be broke. Your life's going to suck. You're going to have people harassing you all the time, staking you out, messing with you, tapping your phones, trying to, trying to set you up on, you know, accusing you of being a pedo, accusing you of being all kinds of other things. You know, I mean, not an easy life. Okay. Not an easy life. So if you think you can go again, up against all that stuff without actually having a real foundation in, in God, you're, you're fooling, you're kidding yourself. You're going to fall. You're going to get shattered to pieces, compromised in a day. All right. So number one, born again, Christian. Okay. Number two, can't be grifters. 
If these guys, if you if you if you see somebody who's fighting the new world order, right, fighting for free speech, going against the establishment, right, standing up to the deep state for a you, tip of the spear kind of stuff, right? You know what I'm talking about. Um, it, it, you know, if they're getting rich by doing all that, you can guarantee they're a shill. You can guarantee they're a disinfo agent, right? You can tell, you guarantee that they're there to steal the narrative from real truth and then push it away, to take resources, make sure they don't get spent on real solutions and real projects and burn it on stupidness, right? Um, so number one, they're a Christian. Number two, they're not a grifter. And number three, check the check what they're saying if it's true or not okay and no one's 100 percent perfect okay no one's going to be a, have a perfect christian testimony right just because someone falls into sin or this or that if they believe the gospel if they're really living the gospel that's what matters okay you don't have to be super hypercritical it's not a pastor okay this isn't a pastor we're talking about or someone like that these are guys that are fighting in a war okay um so they're not they're gonna they're gonna have scars they're gonna they're gonna not have perfect lives. Okay. They're going to be messed up in some ways sometimes. Okay. Um, but they have to believe the gospel and be born again. Okay. That's what matters. Okay. And have quick, soft hearts that repent. Okay. And not be greedy, not be grifters. Okay. They're not going to be rich. Their lives are going to be hard. There's not going to be someone you're going to look up to. You know, you see these influencers, you know, let's take one for example, Mike Cernovich, right? A real degenerate, a rapist, convicted rapist, right? Don't sue me. He was convicted for rape, okay? A guy who taught people how to rape women without getting going to jail, who taught men how to choke girls without killing them during sex, who wrote very graphically about his encounters with transsexuals, right? In the most, I mean, hideous, heinous of terms, okay? This guy is one of the biggest influencers, conservative influencers we have right now on Twitter, okay? A, you know, a guy who is being promoted, obviously, by Twitter and, and the establishment to become a point person to help spread disinfo, right? And so he, you know, um, you see pictures of him sitting back with a glass of wine. My life is awesome. You know, how lucky am I? This is amazing. Living the life, you know. That's not, if you're striving for that, then you're going to fail. You're going to, you're going to get compromised. Okay. You're going to, if you're really in this fight and you're really fighting, you're never going to have that. Right. That's a lie. May you live a thousand years. That's a lie. And he's, a and, 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 and they're filth. Okay. It's not going to happen. All right. Um, so check the truths, right? What they say, make sure everything they're saying is true. Okay. They're not going to be 100% consistent. They're not going to be 100% right all the time, but they have to be sincere when they are wrong and make it right, okay, and correct it, okay? So are they telling the truth? Are they leaving out one group, not commenting on one group who's obviously responsible for this or that or whatever? Um, then they're probably working for that group if they're covering for them, right, and not telling the truth about everything, okay? So number one, Christian. Number two, not a grifter. Number three, consistent truth teller. OK, those are the things to look for when you're looking for someone to follow on Twitter, something like that. Somebody retweets, you know, like a Mike Cernovich or one of these other grifters unironically that I'm just like, eh, double separation. Um, it's just it. Like I said, it's very discouraging, very blackpilling. OK, we need more men like Ted Gunderson. I've known some that were great men. OK, it was a blessing for me to know Ted Gunnarsson for a little while and to be involved in the case he was working on and try to and, and help in some way. Um, you know, Ted Gunnarsson, on a side note, I did have this up there because I just I was listening to this video last night. It was classic. But Art Bell, this degenerate who. Um, um, who's burning in hell now, um, as of a couple years ago, I think he died. When did he die? Yeah, 2018. So Art Bell was the founder of, um, what was the name of that show? Coast to Coast, right? That late night show that talks about aliens and stuff. So that was Art Bell. Um, and um, Ted Gunderson and Associates directly and directly, you know, kind of, kind of outed him for being a pedo. And then Art Bell sued him 
and then ran to Philippines, okay, and spent the rest of his life in the Philippines, shut down his radio show, turned it over, and moved to the Philippines and stayed there and never came back again. Um, so um, he died of an accidental drug overdose, too, um, at the age of 72. I mean, who's doing drugs at 72? Um, anyway, he's gone. Um, and Ted Gunderson and him, they'll never have to see Ted Gunderson again. And, you know, again, Ted Gunderson, um, this is the finders. You probably heard if you've done any research about these child kidnapping groups called the finders. And, um, you know, this was done by Ted Gunderson. I mean, this research that was done, we're talking decades and decades and decades ago, right? Ted Gunderson's the one who investigated the uh, Bohemian Grove, the kid who was raped there. He investigated that kid. He's the one who worked all of that, right? And, um, you know, he's the, you know, Ted was the real deal. He was really going after them. And I'm telling you, he had real hitmen after him, real life hitmen. And these guys are jerks, you know, um, they were serious jerks and they're smart and they're tough and they're, and they're capable, right. And they're, and they're psychos and they have no problem killing anybody, a kid, a woman, you know, they don't care. Okay. There's, 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 there's nothing there that's emptiness okay so anyway just on a side note let's um let's look at um this i don't know if you, any of you know but this would also be an interesting case you know what you should do is if you want to just you know have a little bit of a white pilling experience that that there were truth tellers out there that there are people that still care you know ted gunnerson left a whole network behind him okay this isn't some q thing okay and this is real right these are real people and doing real work and, um, and there's a lot of people out there. They're not on Twitter. They're not going to be popular. If they are on Twitter, they might have like, you know, a couple hundred or a thousand followers and they're just, you know, poop posting like every couple of days or something, you know, just for fun. Right. And just, and they're really just there checking out what's going on on Twitter and trying to get information and figure out who's who and what's what. Right. Um, but they're, you know, they're not, they're not popular. They're not going to get promoted. Right. These guys, these artificial promotions of these people, these right characters that you see. I mean, all these girls that pop up, that pop out of nowhere, all of a sudden they get, you know, half a million Twitter followers. Right. Hundred thousand Twitter followers. It's like, who's this bimbo? Who's this? Who's this ridiculous bimbo that's now a spokesperson for the right? You know, I mean, she's not even cute. And who? I mean, we have a whole bunch of these bimbos that all of a sudden become spokesmodels for the right. And they're all they're all very promiscuous and broken people and they get promoted they make a bunch of money i guess donated to them from from sodomites mostly um i'm gonna do a whole video on all that later and, and all of a sudden they get promoted the real guys the guys that we should follow like ted gunderson you're gonna have to find them right they're not self promoters like this they're not they're not these they're, and they're not going to get promoted by the establishment they're going to get whoosh, squelched for real and not make believe squelch like Alex Jones and some of these other guys. They're going to get for real squelched. OK, um, you know, Alex Jones gets squelched and his revenues double. Right. It's not real squelching when that happens. OK. And real squelching is you get poisoned. Right. Real squelching is you get, you know, you get set up for some ridiculously terrible crimes. Right. You get your your family murder. Your, you know, somebody dies. Right. I mean, those are, you know. Look at all these, look at all these great guys. They died like that. Okay. Ted Gunnerson died with no money. I know for a fact he didn't have any money, real money when he died. Okay. He's struggling to pay doctor's bills when he died. A guy that dedicated his whole life to serving people, right? Compare that to a fat freaking shill like Alex Jones, who's made millions and millions of dollars sitting there, diverting truth, diverting resources from real projects. Okay. It's infuriating to me, really infuriating, really infuriating. Um, but anyway, um, I don't think I'll get into all the all the um, Dr. McDonald stuff. I worked with him for that case for several years. I was involved in that case for quite a while myself, actually. Um, and um, but look it up. It's a very interesting case. Dr. McDonald was a Green Beret doctor that killed his family and um, his two children and his pregnant wife, three children and his pregnant wife. And then set up. I mean, I will talk about it. Set up. He set up this. Um, um, he set up 
Ted and I had very different views on what happened with the, with the Dr. McDonald case. Ted believed that Dr. McDonald was innocent, that he didn't kill his family, that these hippies um, broke into his house and um, and killed his family. OK. Um, I probably believe that that the doctor didn't kill his family. I would agree with Ted Gunderson, but um, but I think Dr. McDonald was running. I know. Dr. McDonald was running the drug studies, MK Ultra drug studies on Fort Bragg in the 60s and 70s, right? Or in the 60s. And so screw him, right? It was my opinion. And I've done everything I could to make sure he stayed in jail the last two decades too, right? Dr. McDonald. Um, but I grew up on Fort Bragg. I know those houses, right? My childhood was spent on Fort Bragg. My dad was Green Beret. And Dr. McDonald lived down the street from us, right? And... Um, you can't, I mean, these houses were small. They're like little army houses. They're like little, like, you know, like small, like little, like, uh, you know, like townhouse slash a little apartment things, right? Multifamily, like little things, right? And they're tiny, 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 right? And so what Dr. McDonald claimed was that his family, you know, this biker gang or this, these druggies broke into his house wanting drugs and, um, um, and then killed his family, right? And badly. I mean, just mutilated the bodies very badly and stabbed him allegedly 13 times. But miraculously, he didn't really get hurt at all. <laughs> he was walking around the next day. Right. And, um, you know, and every, you know, everyone's like, well, die, he's, he could never, he could never have stabbed himself. And I'm like, you know, he could definitely stab himself. These guys were psychos. These were all hitmen. Okay. Most of these guys were killers. I mean, these were all hitmen, real live hitmen. After the war, these guys were real hitters. Okay. That's what they did. And um, they're jerks. They're jerks to the families. They're jerks to others. They're jerks in every part of life. Okay. There's nothing there. They're empty. They're soulless, empty, reprobates, waiting for hell is all they are. Um, and so Dr. McDonald was one of them. And I believe, I mean, it's kind of hard to say exactly what happened, the, the different scenarios there. Um, here's the three scenarios I, I think that are possible. He flipped out, killed his pregnant wife and two kids and framed the hippies who knew he knew from the drug programs there, right? The MK Ultra drug programs. Um, that's a very likely scenario based on a lot of the evidence. Um, he invited them there to kill the family and promised them drugs or program them to be there through MK Ultra projects. And it was probably done as a side deal. That's why the government hung him out to dry. Okay. Um, and you know, obviously he can't say, you know, I trained these guys in MK ultra projects and I had them come kill my family. I didn't really kill them. You know, it's going to look, you know, he's going to be guilty anyway. So he's not going to confess to that either. And the government knows that because then they would just kill him. Um, and the third option is hippies knew, knew him from the studies and came to get drugs and really did kill his family without his consent, but they knew he had drugs. So if they knew he had drugs, then, um, you know, there's, there's a reason they knew he had drugs. He, I mean, you don't, I mean, these houses are all right on top of each other. It's not like you have a three acre, 10 acre yard or something, right? These are all attached houses, right? I mean, they had to know his house. Um, anyway, all these cases, he definitely stabbed himself. He's not going to get stabbed 11 times and, and, and walk away from it without any problems. And regardless of what the scenario is, there's no doubt at all that he was running the MK Ultra project, the drug studies there for at least the older people, the um, consenting volunteers, right? Drug study volunteers um, there. So, you know, screw them. It was my attitude. And Dr. You know, when Ted Gunderson is more of a Boy Scout. He's like, he either did it or he didn't do it. And I'm like, he did it. He's an MK Ultra guy. Screw him. You know, and I'm pretty brutal like that. <laughs> And I did everything I could, you know, and I told Ted, you know, to make sure the good doctor stays in jail and his lawyers all knew other stuff. Um, anyway, so Ted Gunderson was sincere all the way up until the end. Honestly, he was really telling the truth as he saw it in every single case. And that's the thing. Even on the right, there's going to be differences of opinions on on what's different scenarios and different solutions. But if someone's really sincere and honest and telling the truth, you can always, you guys can, you can always work together, right? 
The problem is these grifters recording people's phone calls. Imagine these guys. I've had guys on the right record my phone calls, right? Grifters. And then kind of have threatened me with it. And I'm like, you're playing in very dangerous waters right now, right? It's just, in, it's insanity to me that people would do that, that they would be so selfish that they would want to protect themselves and take a chance of creating evidence for someone else that could potentially get them in trouble. Okay. I mean, talk about selfish. When someone records someone on the rights phone calls, right, without their consent, there's two things. One is they want to use it to extort them because they want to hope they say something embarrassing, right, or about some group or about themselves or something like that. So they have some leverage over them to extort them or they're an informant working for the feds or something like that, trying to set people up. It's one of the two. Okay. Either way, you know, dangerous waters. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but anyway, I just want to encourage people. There's a lot of people out there fighting, telling the truth. And there's a heaven waiting for all eternity that's way more important than this world. And if people really care, really want to fight, really want to help kids, they'd be doing it. Okay. We all should be doing it. It's really happening. Read Ted's work, right? Read these other people's works that are out there right now. And a lot of them don't publish anymore because it doesn't do any good. All it does is put them in jeopardy. Nobody helps them. Nobody really cares. Nobody's going to do anything about it, right? All the guys who would actually in real life are men of action are going to actually have the will to act, right? I mean, they're not going to post it on Twitter, right? They're just going to do it because they're full of vengeance um, and hate for evil, which is a great thing. Don't kid yourself, okay? And this whole idea of trying to have a nice, comfortable life, like all these celebrities try to get you to believe that you should have, that should be your goal, right? Don't believe it. These guys are trash. They're liars. They're filth trying to get you to accept something that they know will destroy you and destroy your soul, destroy your family and everything else. You're way better off choosing the hard life and working hard than you are choosing the, the dainties. Um, so anyway, again... Um, go to some search engine and check out Ted Gunderson. Just do a search for Ted Gunderson and you'll be amazed at all the information that he created, all the research, all the investigations, and then run all those rabbit holes down. Okay. He did great work on so many different topics. Okay. He got into the MK ultra stuff, not just the, not just this volunteer stuff with these drug studies, right. But he, which I don't really care about that much because it's mostly volunteers like Ted Kaczynski and these other idiots, right? These guys are volunteering. There's a bunch of losers, right? To get free drugs and then have experiments done on them, right? And then they flip out from doing drugs and from the experiments. And, um, you know, but those are those are adults making decisions. You know, the, the, the hard ones are the, are, the, are the kids that get taken by these MK, into these MKUltra projects. Sometimes by their special forces dads, volunteer them up. Sometimes it's without any parent's consent or knowledge. And um, and these kids are turned into, you know, the terrible things are done to them, right? They're made to do terrible things. They're used to do terrible things. And, um, um, you know, those are the real tragedies. These things, these unwilling children that are, that, are, that are forced into these kind of things, right? And have very difficult lives as a result of it. Um, you know, and Ted did a great job. He investigated all this stuff his whole life. He really, really cared. Okay. He's a born again Christian. He's in heaven. He didn't have any money, right? He wasn't a grifter. He always told the truth. He's in heaven right now. Not because he didn't have any money, not because he always told the truth, because he's a born again Christian. The other things came from commitment, right? And dedication. It's not easy. Okay. It's not easy, but there's people out there that will respect you. Right. You have all of these little schmucks on YouTube that mock all the people that are poor, that are struggling, that are fighting for truth and they don't have any money. Right. So you have all of this influence like the Kardashians and all these other guys. Right. That are getting rich, fighting the new world order. And you're like, oh, I could get rich and fight the new world order and do good and be a hero. No, you can't. That's a lie. OK, it's not going to happen. Get it out of your head. It's not going to happen. More than likely, you're going to get poisoned. More than likely, you're going to be broke. More than likely, something bad is going to happen to family members. Okay? You have to go no matter what and just keep going on and focus on eternity. 
That's the only way to live and to fight against this real evil. It's the only way you'll be successful. It's the only way. Take your eyes off of Alex Jones and Jack Prasobic and Milo and the Proud Boys and Cernovich and all of these other idiots, right, that are out there. All these complete grifters, liars, filth, all this trash, okay? And just ignore it and focus on what's true and what's right. The gospel, not being a grifter, not being greedy yourself. Get it out of your heart, right? Fight for good no matter what happens, right? And um, tell the truth no matter what, uncompromisingly. No friends, no circle, no protections. Just tell the truth. It doesn't matter, right? You only live once, okay? Live it well. So thank you, Ted Gunderston, for a wonderful life. We remember you. Um, have a good day. I'm Derek.